Thanks, Paul. Thanks, Noah. Thanks, everybody, for coming. I started collecting thrift store paintings about 20 years ago. Uh, I lost that entire collection, the first set of paintings, uh, but I remember them all. And the one I remember most strongly was this painting of a dog. And it was the most enthusiastic painting of the most enthusiastic dog. And the dog was all gums and <clears throat> teeth and, and tongue and spittle and floppy ears. And the, the, the artist had, you know, a beginning artist had just started toward the top of the canvas and done this head and then started doing the neck. And the neck came down and, and then there was too much room. And so the neck just kept coming down and coming down. And, and it was like a, a hand puppet. Or, or uh, a giraffe, but looking back on it, it, it captured dogginess just better than any painting I've seen before or since. It, it was dog. <clears throat> I like original paintings by absolute beginners uh, who've thrown themselves into the project, <laughs> often getting themselves in over their heads, making mistakes, Sometimes they capture something elemental about their subject, but more often they're capturing something elemental about the process of making art, the process of taking risks and making mistakes. Um, hands are difficult. Uh, <laughs> this, is, uh, this is from the Women with Bear Claw Hands series <laughs> that uh, turns up repeatedly if you watch Sparky's. I dislike the term bad art. I think if my reaction to a painting like this is to point at it and say, <laughs> that's bad, I, I don't think that's an interesting reaction. And these paintings are so interesting to me. The best ones do the opposite of provoking a good, bad judgment. In fact, they overwhelm my critical faculties. They leave me stunned, wondering. <clears throat> They cause a sense of wonder. So I don't call them bad, but I'm okay with the word failed. <laughs> failure is interesting. And it's a normal, failure is a normal part of the process of becoming an artist. But artists usually fail in private. So when I come across one of these paintings for sale, I feel like I've been allowed to see something rare that I was never supposed to see. Sometimes what overwhelms me is a stream of questions about the provenance. Who made this? Why? Who framed it so carefully? And then if they loved it so much to frame it that carefully, how did it end up in a thrift store? And then who did the thrift store owner think was going to buy it? There was this one painting that I bought for $3 online. I won an auction. I was the only bidder. I'm usually the only bidder. I won it for $3, and then they said, the shipping and handling is $50. It was a painting of a, of a young guy standing in front of some mountains. And, uh, and I just I wrote them this outraged, self-righteous email, and I was like, why $50? And they said, well, it's 45 pounds. And so when this thing arrived in the mail, it was the size of my car. It was four foot by three foot. It had a metal frame. It was a $300 framing job. And so this disjuncture anyway. Uh, I th I'll tell you what I think all of these paintings have in common. The skill, felt, the skill level of the artist falls short of the ambition of the artist. And that's the opposite of what you get when you search on eBay for naive or primitive or outsider paintings. You get artists who have perfected a naive style. They can produce the same cat or little girl in a bonnet over and over again. They've commodified it. Uh, bad art to me. <laughs> is when the skill dwarfs the ambition. Gigantic technical ability plus no big dream, except to create the same product over and over and over. The best paintings in my collection, the artist couldn't make another one of these if you paid them. <laughs> they are the only one, <clears throat> they are the only one of whatever this is. It is the opposite of a product. I envy these artists sometimes. Sometimes I envy their apparent innocence, but always, <laughs> always I envy their ambition. The fact that they just 
threw themselves into it. They tried. They were willing to take a risk to possibly get mocked. Someone might point at them and say, that's bad. Uh, you know, it's easy for me to remember that they are all more tech technically skilled than I am. <laughs> total lack of skill combined with total lack of courage to try and improve. Uh, it's probably another reason I chafe at the term bad art. I would have to work for a long time to rise to the level of what people are calling bad art. Anyway, I have to wade through about a thousand paintings, literally. 1,000 cats and little girls with bonnets and clowns to find just one that makes me stop and say, what? What is going on here? What would... Uh, I love that feeling. I worry sometimes that, you know, when I'm... <laughs> that I should be doing this all the time because what it, like, and, you know, if I'm just hanging out with my family or reading or something, what if there's a painting like this out there for $3? <laughs> There's only one of them in the world. What if I'm missing out on that by not looking for paintings all the time? Uh, Sparky's just got its 100th painting this month. Each one of these 100 was at some point just my favorite thing in the entire world. Uh, when they nail it, when, when one of these paintings nails it, like this one does, this is America, you know? Uh, I'll leave you, this is my absolute favorite painting in the collection. I want to live, I want to live in this painting. Check out the hands. Hands, hands are difficult. Thanks.